Hello and welcome to the third NoCoco tutorial for Adalo. Today we're going to look at the app bar and the tab bar. If you don't know what that is, uh, both are menu bars and navigational elements. The app bar being the one on the top of the screen, the tab bar the one at the bottom. As you can see, it is not under the most used elements. So I'm going to use the search bar, type in tab. There it is, drag it there. So um, if you drag them to the top and the bottom of the screen, they will be automatically fixed in their positions there. So all scrollable content will just move beneath them. To demonstrate this, let's add a text element. I have some placeholder copy, the clipboard. You can see, ooh, that's a lot of text. Let's preview this. And as you can see, it scrolls right beneath the two bars, which is exactly what we want. Okay, so this doesn't look very good. So I'm going to select the whole screen, which allows me now to extend it. And if you now look into the preview again, you will see uh oh, something strange has happened text still scrolls beneath the app bar but it has moved to the middle and that's because you really need to um, have it placed at the top and bottom of your screen it will not move with it if you make the screen bigger so let's select the tab bar and when we try to move it you can see that i now moved the text bar that can be a bit of a struggle so best is to do what I showed you in the last tutorial, select the whole screen, make the component that gets in the way invisible, and then you can move it once again without any troubles. If we go to preview again, you will see, ah, the text is still invisible. So after you're done arranging your components, do not forget to turn them to visible again. Now everything should be working again. There we are. All right. Let's have a look at the app bar. You can change the name to whatever you like. You can change the visibility. You can arrange elements. You can make a list out of them, group them or delete them, just as with the text element in the last tutorial. You can change the background color which is set to the primary app color per default and you can switch the icon color from auto to a color of your choice you can decide let's zoom in a bit here whether or not you want to have a shadow under the app bar or a border you can choose a color and a width for the border and give it a very Let's call it a very distinct look. I do not like it. I'm going to deactivate it again. Um, you can under app bar type decide that you do not want a solid color, which is the default setting, but you'd rather have it translucent. In this case, you get a translucent semi blurry or well, yeah, very much blurry um, app bar can also set it to background image. In this case, um, the app bar becomes a lot bigger. You cannot change that at the moment. It stays at that size. And you can select an image source. You can either upload an image. You can uh, link to one that you have previously uploaded in the database, or you can link to a URL. I'm just gonna upload one. So as you can now see, you can brand your app very nicely this way. You have a left icon. This is the arrow right here. You can deactivate this. You can choose a different icon if this one is not to your liking. And then via add action, in this case I would say link back. So that it all link back always links back to the last screen. Under title, you can select whether you want text or a logo. If you choose logo, you can do the same thing as with the background image, upload it directly, 
link to a previously uploaded one in the database or link to a URL. So I'm gonna take this logo here, small aside uh, for your logos to work as intended. They need to have a transparent background and be saved as a PNG with transparency layer. Also, uh, ideally run them through a PNG compressor. There's a lot of very good free ones. Just type compress PNG into Google and use them. They will significantly decrease the size of your PNGs, which will increase, uh, which will uh, improve the loading times of your app significantly. You can change the logo size. You can put it to a bit to the left. I never understood what that's good for, but it is what it is. You can activate or deactivate two icons on the right. Again, choose the icon and add an action and you can also choose toggle or icon. Toggle is a special kind of button that refers to a boolean true false option. It's an on off switch basically. Um, I'm gonna set everything back to the standard solid color now. Okay, but I'll leave the logo in there. I'm gonna remove that text for now. Uh, there we are. Okay. Make this a normal size again. Now let's have a look at the tab bar. As you can see, tab bar you can rename just as the app bar. You have the same options regarding visibility, arrangement, etc. The fill color means the background color. And then you have an active color and an inactive color. So blue for active, gray for inactive. You can change that, however. And in this field active tab, you can choose which one should be the one shown as active for orientation purposes. So now I chose the second one, search and home got gray. You can deactivate all of the tabs with the exception of the first one. So you can have between one and five tabs. You can uh, select an icon for each one of them and a text and you can add magic text and you can format them somewhat and then of course via add action you uh, make the action happen that you want to make happen. So now we're gonna do a little demonstration. We're gonna duplicate the screen by clicking on the name of the screen in the upper left corner then staying on the left mouse button and also pressing down either Option or Alt, depending whether or not whether you're on a Mac or a Windows computer, and dragging it, and that's how you duplicate the screen. We're gonna call that screen Team, and maybe. Let's change that back and call it team just so that there's a clear difference between the two. I'm now gonna go to the third tab, which is team. I'm gonna add an action and I'm gonna link to the team screen. And on the team screen, I'm gonna select the third one. as the active one and gonna link back on the first one to the home screen. Let's see if that works. All right, we're on the home screen. I click on team, we go to the team screen, click on home, back home, and you can see that it's either one or the other that's displayed as active. Very nice. All right, um, that's basically it. Um, just a little bonus lesson. If for some reason you are not satisfied with the options, Adalu gives you 
regarding the app, but you can always build your own. So let's just remove that one. You can just go to simple, which is simple graphical elements. Take a rectangle, for example. Yeah, let's make it that size. Give it a brighter blue color. Add text element. So let's say team. Make that white and extra black and align it in the center. And we can also add from buttons. An icon and let's make our own back button and give it an action, link it back to home. All right, and now make sure you select all of the elements three components selected make them a group give them a reasonable name like my app uh, go to edit styles this one is important and under fixed say top so that it stays there let's preview this Okay, you see, there's our own team. Yeah, there you go. So you can make any app bar as you desire it. In the next tutorial, we'll take a closer look at the login form and its possibilities, as well as various tricks of the trade. See you then.